Hello guys, so today I am, uh, I'm going with my track bike and I'm getting a bike fit for my pursuit position. So uh, this year I've got a few individual pursuits planned at UCI level track races, assuming they don't get cancelled, which uh, should be pretty cool, I'm pretty excited for that. I've never actually done an individual pursuit, so uh, I'm hoping it would suit me, it's sort of my sort of length of effort, so uh, if I can get aero, hopefully I can get a really good time. So I'm taking this down to Vancrew, Vancrew Bike Fit Studio, and uh, we're gonna get a nice little bike fit with my new Prime bars. So here is the Prime Noosa bar. Uh, this is their Carbon TT bar. I got it a few days ago. In fact, I got it on my birthday. It wasn't a few days ago, it's a lie. It's like two weeks ago, but I've been waiting till I can get a bike fit. So I've just assembled it briefly to just sort of a, a standard position and uh, we'll be moving it around loads. We've got the different spaces. We've got this piece, to, if it's too high, I think that's just to give it extra stability, which I probably will for uh, an individual PC where you're probably obviously putting a lot of power down. So uh, yeah. Can't wait to be using that. And I've got my really old TT helmet, some Giro Advantage or whatever. It's crusty, very crusty. I need a new TT helmet. So this bike has been sat above my bed, hanging up on the wall for over a year now. I think a year and, a, and three or four months. Literally, I haven't touched it once. Look at the dust on this poor, poor bike. Um, I've literally just had a bit of a sneezing fit taking it down from all the dust, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna just give that a quick wipe down. Do you think you could come down a little bit on the front? Um, maybe. So just to say. Because then, but what, what my thinking is, is that we we drop you down here, because then we can keep this angle. Because normally we could, I could drop you down here, but then we're going to lose this angle that oh, we're yeah, yeah. trying to yeah, work yeah. for. What's your initial impression being a little bit lower at the front, right? Okay? I think it feels good. It okay. like, feels more like second wave. Yeah. Yeah, I left the bar at that same the angle that we had. Oh, cool. Which where you're holding, that's 45 degrees there. Oh, so nice. Let's move that for well, Let's run some data and have a look. Ready? Yeah. Thank you. A bit faster. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, gone from a CDA of 195 to 188. Oh, okay. And 0. 0.3, so 4.4, 4.3. Yeah, and if anything, I would say that felt more planted. Did it? But I felt like I almost could put maybe more power than the other one. Yeah. It's yeah, being a little bit lower. Yeah, yeah, I feel like more, yeah, more control, like I can... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Why don't we try a little bit more of a tilt on the bars? More up like that? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, it's a 45 degree. Mm -hmm. But if we just go 5 degrees, to yeah. 50. Okay. Tell me when you are ready. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, from a muscular, I know that you're in your low effort, that's a better muscular effort. That distribution of the muscles is better than the other yeah. one. It feels a lot better. So Garth had this really cool piece of equipment. It's these shorts that detect how much you're using various muscle groups in your legs. So they detect the ratio between, I think, quads to hamstrings, which, uh, and then obviously how much on either side. And that's just really good for seeing if a certain position is restricting a certain muscle group, or if a certain position forces you to end up being less balanced and less stable um, side to side. So it's really useful. It's really interesting as well to see how much, you know, being more quad dominant or more hamstring dominant. I think on average, I was slightly more quad dominant, but overall in, in the later positions, I actually ended up getting a really good uh, split across all four quarters, you know, quads and hamstrings and then left and right. And 25% in each one is ideal. And towards the end, I managed to get that, which is, uh, is really good. It'd be interesting to test that on the road bike as well. But uh, yeah, it was good to get that and just see how the various positions affected that. Same time. Oh, really? Same time. 4.03 and... No, 4.3, sorry, and 187. Oh, okay, so yeah, pretty much the same. It's, it's module, you've got point 
Zero, zero, one. Oh, okay. Plus that. So it was 188 with the 15 spaces removed. Yeah. And then that one with the 50 degree is 187. Oh, okay. I mean, that's... That's so much better. Yeah, it's almost, it's almost like they can't the same. So. So Garth has a really fancy camera setup that uh, you know points towards me when I'm riding in the position, and it calculates the frontal area of my position, and then that multiplied with an estimated coefficient of drag CD value gives a really good idea of what the CDA will be, and then you know you can apply that to how fast you think you'll be going for a, a certain event and see how many seconds we've actually saved. And in my case, it was a, it was a solid 10-15 seconds I think over. Um, over a four kilometer pursuit, which is the sort of event I'll be doing on this bike. Uh, obviously it's an estimate, but it does give a really good idea of, of how much I've saved. And I think, uh, and it's just good to see the differences that can be made. And, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll be practicing more on the bike. I haven't got the bars on there at the moment because I need to get a new stem from Prime, but hopefully I'll be able to practice it, maybe refine it a little bit and save even more power. Anyway, that's going to be the end of the video. I hope it was interesting and thanks for watching.